would you please indulge me of for, course. for maybe like two minutes? Yeah. Because I'm just going to, I want to preach at you for a moment. No, go for it. I want to hear you do but that. But this, will... this is addressing the Bible's veracity. Here's how you can know the Bible is true. I've shared that we've talked about Adam and Eve being two naked vegetarians living in a garden with a river and two trees. Yeah. God gave them a law. They sinned. What did they do? They tried to cover their shame by themselves with fig leaves. Yeah. God sheds blood for the first time covering their sins. In other words, human beings can't cover their own shame. God must do it. Yeah. Now the Bible continues. You see a story of Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel. What was the problem? He was upset because he offered vegetables. It wasn't a pleasing sacrifice to God. God wants a sacrifice of blood. Yeah. The story of Abraham and Isaac. Do you remember? Kill your only beloved son. So what yes. happens? They go marching up a hill called Moriah. Yep. The son is carrying the wood of the sacrifice on his back. And he asks, Father, where's the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham says, the Lord will provide. And just as this father is about to kill his beloved son, God says, stop. The next time we visit that same mountain, it is the very mountain on which Jesus Christ was crucified. The Father did not stop. When you read the Mosaic Law, Passover, an unblemished lamb had to be with the people for a short amount of time. Why? So that its blood could be spilt for the covering of sins. Yeah. We see that with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a sacrifice yeah. of blood for sins. Isaiah describes a man who was so beaten, we thought that he was being led like a lamb to the slaughter for his own sins, but he was dying for the sins of his people. Yes. 700 years later, John the Baptist points at Jesus Christ and says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. All of those bloody lamb sacrifice stories were a scarlet thread in the Old Testament pointing to the better sacrifice in Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Old Testament keeps going. When, the, when God saw that everybody was sinning, he promised, I'm going to wipe out this world with a flood, but he offered an ark of salvation. Peter tells us that ark is Christ. There was one door to go into that boat. Jesus Christ is the door. Run through Jesus to get to the ark of your salvation. Yeah. There's a story when the Jews are wandering in the desert. They were being naughty. They were being sinful. God yeah. sends snakes to bite them. Yeah. But he tells Moses, fashion a serpent, raise it on a pole, and if people will look to the curse to the thing that is the response to their sins, they will live. Jesus Christ said, just as the serpent was raised up in the wilderness, so too must the Son of Man be raised up. So if you look at Christ, the sting of death will not take hold of you. All of these stories in the Old Testament, the tabernacle, the place where God dwells, Jesus tabernacles with us. He is the ladder that we see with Jacob's ladder, when he said angels descending up and down on him. He is our surety. He is our city of refuge. All of these stories, he's our kinsman redeemer. The story of Ruth and Boaz, he redeems Ruth. Do you know that that was like the great, 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 great grandparents of Jesus Christ? There's one lineage in the Bible. Yeah. It follows the lineage of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, I talked about the lambs. In the end, here's what the Bible says. Yeah. God is going to wrap up this whole show and he's going to judge the world in righteousness. And this time when Jesus returns, it's not as a meek lamb. He's coming back as a roaring lion who is going to crush his enemies and put them under his feet. You will cry out to the mountains, crush me, fall on me, rather than facing the wrath of the Lamb. Yeah. He's going to redeem his people. He's going to restore the earth. And we see in Revelation 21 and 22, there's going to be a garden, there's going to be a river and two trees, and God will dwell with his people. Yeah. Do you see the bookends of the Bible? Do you see how everything is pointing to Christ? Yes. Now, that story that I just shared with you, Lickety Split, written over 1,400 years, 40 different author authors, three different languages on three different continents. My friend, there is no way that story was concocted by man.